Welcome back, MTP crew. And if you're new, you know what to do. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for future content. It really does help this channel to grow and I appreciate it. Today we have a extra special treat. We are on a real driving test. My name is Scott and I'll be your friendly driving instructor today. <laughs> Not been too friendly to Mo. If you joined us on our lives, then you will know about Mo's progress. So today it is the big day and currently Mo is sitting inside the vehicle joined by his driving test examiner. The examiner will start your driving test with the tell me question. You might see just across from there we had someone doing an eyesight test as well. So that is part of the beginning of the test. Mo's been asked what's the minimum tyre tread depth and the condition of the tyre. And Mo's given a very good answer, which is 1.6. Congratulations to you if you said 1.6. And no wear or tear or cuts or bulges. Normally, when you start your test, as we exit the test centre here, do take care. Nice and slowly down the ramp here. And as you can see, the road is a bit narrow as we move ahead. There's an 80% chance we'll have the sat nav to start, and that's our independent drive. Otherwise, the examiner will just ask you to exit the car park. Today, the examiner's been given directions to go left and left again. Here we have a triangle junction. As you might see coming up here on the left, there's a triangle shaped bit of grass in the middle of the road. So we're gonna be turning left here and then shortly after left again. And you might notice the double double lines here. So we've turned left into this very small road. And then shortly after we've got these double double lines known as giveaway lines and we'll be turning left again. Whenever we start the driving test, no matter what test center we're at, always take it nice and slow when we exit the test center. And again, as we come back, just nice and slow back into the test center. The minimum observations at all junctions is right, left, right. We can look more than this, but we must double check the right side. Most on a nice left turn here, keeping quite close to those double lines and following the double lines as he turns left. That way, if there is any oncoming traffic, we still stand a chance of stopping and leaving enough space for the traffic to get through. Now, normally on your driving test here, the examiner asks us to pull up on the left as we exit the test center. Today, Mo is just following the road ahead. This is a good time for the examiner to give directions. At the end of the road, I'd like you to turn left. Shortly after, we'll check our inside mirror and left mirror and signal left. We want to start to slow down where these lines in the middle of the road start. There's five lines. And if we can't see clearly by the third line, I would suggest coming to a stop at the end of the road. Remember the observations, right, left, right, minimum observations. Mainly we're checking for motorbikes. And as we move out again, just a nice left turn there, following the yellow lines and looking into the new road. New road, new mirrors, new road, new rules. Look out for speed changes as we go. So far, we've been driving through a 20 mile an hour zone. Let's have a look here at the end of the road. There seems to be some signs. And it actually looks like we have a new speed limit. So we're joining a 20 zone. And we're being told to turn right here. Nice position from Mo. Again, we just want to check our mirrors, signal right. And then position, as Mo's done, close to the center line of the road that we're on going to do our right left right observations or more and then when it's safe to do so we're going to go out straight to the center line in the middle of the road as you can see here from the windscreen view we can see that zigzaggy line in the middle we're going to go straight forwards till that line disappears and now turn that way we remain on the left side of the new road and we don't cut any corners and drive dangerously into oncoming traffic. So most roads that are 20, we just saw the speed sign there, uh, do have speed bumps here at Pinner Driving Test Centre. 
So if you have speed bumps, just swap in a driving test center so far as of 2024, they will be 20 mile an hour zones, but do keep currently looking for signs to know the current maximum speed limit. Take the next road on the left, inside mirror, outside mirror, signal left, and as you can see, this road's called High View. We've got a speed change as we enter it, and it's a very, very tight road. So we're probably gonna be looking at the road a lot, maybe some traffic that might be exiting, probably around walking speed as we do that turn. It's very narrow, and we may miss those speed change signs as we enter the road. So on a road that has regular street lights and no speed signs, the theory test tells us that's a 30 mile an hour road. So if you're unsure, keep looking for signs. And if you don't see any, and there's regular street lights, it's most likely going to be a 30 mile an hour road. Mo's done a nice pullover here, although he seems to have gone on the pavement slightly there. He did receive one minor driver fault for clearance. I think we've just identified that minor driver fault. I'm not too sure exactly what's going on here. Okay, now it makes sense. Oh, by the way, I'm doing this live commentary. So at some point in the driving test, this is it. The examiners asked the candidate, Mo, to drive forwards and leave roughly one car length before moving off. They will tell you if there's any driveways, not to worry about the driveways. You can stop in front of the driveway. So if the examiner says it's okay to stop in front of the driveway, it's okay to stop in front of the driveway. They most likely prompt us to edge up a little bit so that we've got that one car length. And this just is for one occasion on the driving test. It won't keep happening. But what will is the examiner asks us to pull over and stop on the left. Again, at least two more times. So it looks like we may be doing that again now. As you can see, Mo's identified this little parking bay here. And we've pulled over nice and slow. It does look like we're getting extremely close to the pavement there again. And coming to a stop. Excellent. And not blocking any driveways here. So it's nice that Mo entered in at a slow speed. Do use your reference points. So... If you look at the white bonnet on the car, you may see in between the black spot in the middle and the left side white part of the bonnet, you can see the yellow line lining up and the curb lining up. If you just wanna put little stickers or something on your mobile device or whatever you're watching this on, then you've got a reference point. You can do that on the dashboard in your own vehicle to just line up with a nice park position, place your sticker, and there's your reference point. At the end of the road, turning left. So inside mirror, outside mirror, left signal, roughly five car lengths from the junction. Nice again with the positioning here. Can you see how we're pointing left, like those double yellow lines in the left side of the screen? We're kind of following those. So it's a really nice position here at the end of the road. Be very helpful for us to turn left. And also, if the road's wide enough, would leave more space for people to turn right and more chance of motorbikes trying to go round us on the right side, which is safer for this country. And we're not leaving any space on the left for motorbike cyclists to try and squeeze through. So that's called defending. So that position is really good for a few different things. So if you put your sticker on the, your screen, obviously, I'm, I'm joking, by the way, um, <laughs> you may see a similar reference point actually to last time, but that yellow line, I'm looking at the yellow line because it's there, otherwise it'd be the curb, by the way. The curb is always there, the yellow line's not always there. So um, that's lined up in a similar position, but it did go onto that black dot in the middle of the car there. That worries me. That's like, <sighs> we might be hitting the pavement as we're coming in to pull over. Okay, this is a very common place for the examiner to ask you to pull over and stop. They're now starting the independent drive. I actually did this test route with another student recently. So let me see. Yes, so it is the independent drive. At the end of the road, turn left. Then at the traffic lights, turn right. And follow the sign towards Stanmore. Actually, recap. 
That is one of the routes. But Moe's going to get followed assigned to Heathrow. I just remembered he turns right onto George V Avenue, which is the only real George, uh, George carriageway. I keep calling it a George carriageway. Um, dual carriageway. Well done. I pat myself on the back. A little uh, high five there for myself as well. Um, so it's the only real dual carriageway in Pinner. Um, it does have a section of uh, 40 mile an hour speed limit. We're going to be having a look at that shortly. Okay, so hopefully Mo's got the directions now. He's happy with that. Maybe just kind of clarified it with the examiner and then making sure it's safe now and moving off. So we've got a vehicle behind. We're going to wait for that one. Let's do our left shoulder quickly, right shoulder quickly, signal right, make sure we're still in gear and off we go. Mm, okay, we kind of missed an opportunity there, didn't we? All right, do that again. Left shoulder, right shoulder, signal. Off we go. And uh, we're off. Nice. Good job there, Mo. Um, only missed the one gap, really. Okay. Now, remember the directions? Ah, you haven't remembered the directions? You may want to ask your examiner now. I'm sorry, I forgot the directions. The examiner will be more than willing to help again with the directions. So even though we know it's independent drive, if we have forgotten the directions, just ask the examiner and they will help us with the directions. So it's at the end of the road turning left and then at the traffic lights turn right and then follow the sign to Heathrow. So as we see, we're coming towards the end of the road. This would be a good time to do our mirrors and signal, roughly five car lengths. Start to gently slow down and then look right, look left, look right again. And if it's clear, start to go. Let's see if any cars come. So no cars, no cars. Oh, there was a car. All right, cool. So we haven't really missed any opportunity there. It seems like there was a reason to stop for that red learner. Now, I will let you into a little secret. Mo failed this test for undue hesitation. Spoiler alert. Now, it happens at least five times from the uh, feedback we got from the examiner at the end. Now, as you can see, Mo's not really done a good job of positioning here. Did leave himself a little bit vulnerable to traffic being in the right lane. So if we know we're going to be turning right at the traffic lights, position into the right lane as soon as possible and continue to follow the right lane, towards traffic lights. This is a crossroads, very important, as important as roundabouts. Yes, I said that, as important as roundabouts. Many, many people, especially at this crossroads, fail their driving test. Enter into the junction slowly, steer straight, and start to position to the right gently. Stop in the center, in line with the center of the new road, the person opposite's also on the driving test doing their right turn at the crossroads from the opposite direction. And if there's no oncoming traffic and it's safe to turn, complete your turn. Otherwise, we can wait in the center of the junction until the oncoming traffic comes to a stop at the red light. Once they've come to a slow stop, start to move and clear the junction as soon and as safely as possible. Okay, remember, we're going to be following the sign now to Heathrow. And if we have forgotten, it's okay. We can ask the examiner. Sorry, I forgot the directions. I say no problem. Just follow the sign towards Heathrow. Just give us that gentle reminder. So please do not be afraid to, you know, have a two-way conversation with your examiner, especially if you need to know the directions. They would prefer that you keep to the test route. Um, so they're more than willing to help with those directions. We must ask in a safe location. So please do not ask while you're going round and round and round about <laughs> or sitting in the middle of a crossroads. This would be bad timing. The examiner wouldn't give us direction as it wouldn't be safe to do so. Um, they would most likely just say whatever's the safest thing to do. Just keep us safe and do your best. Um, so what that means is just continue to follow the direction that you're going. Um, we will not fail even if it's the different direction to the test route. As long as we're showing the examiner that we're safe, we're doing our best, you will pass your driving test. Okay, I can't stress this enough. If you've watched any of the lives that we do or any of the content on the platforms, then you'll hear me say this again and again and again. The direction is not as important as safety. 
The examiner is marking us on our ability to drive safely. Okay, so remember we're following the sign here towards Heathrow. You might see a little picture of a plane on the sign we just passed on the left. If not, feel free to rewind, pause, and have a good look at the sign. Again, most positions not good here, is it? We're supposed to be following the sign towards Heathrow. We're in the left lane. Okay, and we've gone left instead. That's fine. We just said that, didn't we? So it doesn't matter about the direction as long as we're driving safely. We used the left lane. The left lane was for straight only, and we've done that. So we followed the road safely, and don't worry about the signs. So now the uh, examiner would say, okay, um, we may have gone a different way. They might not even say anything at all, and just say, I'd like you to follow the next sign towards Hatch End. Talking about Hatch End, we're in Hatch End. <laughs> At least I call this Hatch End. Um, there's lots of shops here. Uh, it's very busy. Can be quite a lot of traffic here sometimes. And just be cautious of lorries maybe parking in the middle of the road to make deliveries. Or buses stopping at bus stops, having to go around them. Maybe pedestrians trying to cross the road. So as we just mentioned, many, many hazards. So what my top tip would be is just look ahead, scan the road for the next hazard, plan early, mirror checks, slow down if we need to, change direction if we need to. Worst case scenario, come to a slow stop. Okay, so the next sign actually will say Stanmore. And then after that, we will have, let me see, Stanmore first. So we're going to go over this hill where the traffic light is, and then we're going to have Stanmore. It must be. Oh, no, it's Headstone Lane. Headstone Lane. Okay, so we're passing Hatch End Station just there on the left. Uh, you might even see the entrance. Oh, we've passed the entrance to the car park, okay, for the station. Now, there is a sign here for Stanmore. Have a look to your left. Again, you can feel free to pause the video now. Have a good look for Stanmore. Have a look at the road markings. Match them and do your best to follow the road ahead here. 12 o'clock. Mo actually saw a little right signal there, so I understand why it came to a slow stop there. Um, it looked like the vehicle might have come round the roundabout, so that was pretty justified. And the vehicle behind <laughs> doesn't seem to like it, and they sped off. Vroom, look at them go. They're off. Anyways, we're not going to break any speed limits. Uh, we're going to keep to the speed limit and keep safe, and just let that person go, okay? Mo hasn't done anything wrong quite justified there. I did see the vehicle with the right signal on. The examiner would see that too. And you know, we're not going to run the risk. If that vehicle's signaling, it could possibly keep coming round. It looked like it was. Okay. We just passed a sign there. And that sign would be Headstone Lane. Headstone Lane. Um, just in case you're wondering why that video keeps clicking in and out, it's because it's dash cam and it's not completely synced. So I had to do some editing just to make sure that the back camera is uh, in sync with the front camera. Now, that might be undue hesitation. It seems like we've got a big gap there and the vehicles that were on the roundabout weren't going round, like we said about the previous one. They were exiting the roundabout. So no need for us to stop. Look at the wheels of the vehicles, judge the body language of the vehicle. And then if you feel safe, go. That's a little bit of a late exit there. We almost drove past this third exit before we started to turn into the left lane. We do want to start to turn into the left lane at the second exit. So really leaving that way too late. Almost looked like we're going to go round the roundabout again. So check that left mirror at the second exit. Signal left at the second exit. And move across to the left lane at the second exit. This will put us in the left lane as we exit at the third exit, making life safe and easy. If you're on bigger roundabouts or two lanes, there are two lanes on the exit. So depending on which one's the safest and easiest one, like we just mentioned, use that one. We can always move back to the left later, as using the left lane is super important on the driving test. And you're going to see Mo gets a minor driver fall a little bit further down this road as we go on to the George V Avenue, which we discussed earlier. That is a dual carriageway. Mo uses the right lane and doesn't seem to move back to the left lane. This could even be a serious driver fall. If the left lane is free and it's safe to use, 
we must use the left lane to go straight ahead. I believe I just mentioned this, but I'm getting old. <laughs> So my memory is not as good as it used to be. Stop making excuses, Scott. Um, normal driving. So that's what it's referred to. Using the left lane, normal driving. Overtaking is using the right lane. Or if you're turning right, also use the right lane. Any other reason, use the left lane. Hence, normal driving. A little bit further down the road, we're going to have width restrictions. Now, these width restrictions aren't particularly nice. It's going to be real. The road is curving, just like you can see here. And in the curve, we have two poles, one on the left, one on the right side of the vehicle. And we have to drive through the curve, through the poles. This is a six foot six i believe let's have a look at the sign as we get closer to the width restriction we'll see a red circle coming up a little bit further down the road and if it says six six in it we have the smallest width restriction the largest is seven foot so let's have a look we've got a sign coming up there on the left feel free to pause it i'm going to try and see it Oh, I couldn't see it. <laughs> Write down in the comments what it is. Thank you. And if you're still here, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. And if you do like content like this, I need to know, guys, because I'm not doing this because it's fun. I'm doing this to try and help you. So put it down in the comments if this helps, and I can make more content like this for you. All right, let me see if I can see if it says 6'6". Six, six. I already know it says 6'6". Six, six. I'm pretty sure I can see it from here. You can't see that? Come on, Mo, let's go. <laughs> All right, so slowly now look at the sign on the left. Six, six, very small. Can you see the poles? And look at the curve. It's not straight. Quite tricky. So as we come in, we've actually got to kind of, yeah, can you see that? Yes, Mo's doing a pretty decent job here. And he's going with the curve. I could see him adjusting. Yeah, you can still see it slightly. We talked about that reference point on the dashboard, uh, um, sorry, on the bonnet. You'd do it in the dashboard if you're in the car. You see the curve or the yellow lines on the left where they're lining up on the bonnet of the car? This is the best way to see from the driver's side where we're positioned in relation to the curb. Now, as we drive down this road, it's really long. I'm just going to try and explain that again. Can you see it moving? Have a look at the curb on the bonnet. At the moment, it's really quite close to the left tip of the car but every now and again it seems to just kind of move look there again and then he wiggles right so that's just the oncoming cars coming so do try to look at the curb 60 percent, and look at the oncoming traffic 40 percent. now you may be wondering what's happening here the examiners asked him to pull over and stop on the left now as he's pulling over and stopping on the left i think mo's noticed you see that parked car in the rear mirror sorry the rear camera that was slightly obstructing the road. So if Mo had parked opposite that vehicle, he would have blocked the road. So he's done a pretty decent job, actually, of edging up here. We did do this on his driving course, and I caught him out, and I told him that the examiners tend to do this on the test. So it seems to be a point that he's actually remembered and used it on his driving test. I'm really quite proud of Mo here. Well done, Mo. Right, so the exam is just reminding him probably of the next sign to follow. I apologize, I have kind of mentioned some of the signs wrong on this. Um, I said Hatch End earlier, it was Headstone Lane, I apologize. But now the exam is asking him to follow the next sign to Hatch End. So we're going to head back towards Hatch End where we were earlier, where we had the shops and the high street that can be quite busy at times. So we're going to follow the road ahead towards the traffic light. Now, we did mention about this crossroads, and a lot of people fail at this crossroads um, because they don't see the road on the right. Now, little secret, Hatch End is going to be on the right. So as we get closer towards the traffic light, we'll have a little look up, have a look at the sign there on the left on the lamppost, and see if we can spot Hatch End together, and then we're going to follow that sign towards Hatch End. And this will take us on to the George V or the George Carriageway. <laughs> the dual carriageway, Scott. George Carriageway, what's wrong with you? Um, yes, so this is the point where I believe Mo picks up another minor fault. 
for normal driving. We talked about that earlier. So unless we're overtaking or turning right, we do want to try and use the left lane. All right, did you spot it there? I kind of just saw it as we drove past. So again, feel free to rewind. We did just pass the hatch end sign there on the left just before the traffic light coming up, which we can't really see because the van's obstructing it at the moment. But that's why the van and I believe a bus in front of the van has come to a stop. You can see the brake lights. Once those brake lights go off, there we go. Um, traffic starts to move. Inside mirror, right mirror, use the right lane. You can see some bad road markings here. Just try to position as much as you can towards the center of the road and then lean to the right. That's it. And if we need to stop, we can stop in the middle of the yellow box. Remember the theory test, we're allowed to stop in yellow boxes if we're turning right. So that's why they're designed. We can use the yellow box to stop and wait until it's safe and then turn right. We do have a lot of part vehicles here at the high school and we're going to wait until we get further down this road. This is the George the Fifth Avenue, the dual carriageway. And at the moment, it's a 30 mile an hour road. But if you look ahead, we may see the speed change to 40 miles an hour. So I really struggled to say my THs, so I try to say them for Fs. You might wonder what the hell we just went on there. Okay, anyway, so now we want to move back to left. Oh, Mo, get in there. Yes, where did it get normal driving fault then? Strange, let's see, because it has to be this road. I don't see why he would have got normal driving. Now you notice the van there, the van's doing a U-turn. You can see it in the rear view mirror as well. That actually happens on the test, not just at Pinner Test Center, but other test centers too. Uh, here's the speed change now to 40. So do practice doing U-turns on dual carriageways if it's on your driving test. Um, there's one down south of the river in London called Morden. They do a U-turn on a dual carriageway as well there. Um, we do want to position to the left in the gap. You might see another gap here on the right. Position to the left where you saw that yellow barrier. Uh, position close to that left. If we're not sure what side of the road to drive on, so it's just blank, there's no road markings, must keep to the left. So for your U-turn, when you get to that little gap in the middle, try to be positioned more to the left side of the central reservation. You can stop and wait in the central reservation so it's safe to complete the U-turn and go to the opposite side of the dual carriageway. Okay, I'm really confused. Why did Mo get a minor driver fault for position normal driving? All right, I'll keep my eyes peeled for that one. That is very interesting. It surely happened on this road. It must happen here towards the end of the road or something. Let's see. Okay, we're looking as far ahead as possible. Usually there's parked cars where these houses are. So far, I don't see any parked cars, but I'm scanning the road ahead as much as possible. There's something there, isn't there? Yeah, I swear that's a parked car, no? I'm seeing things. No, yep, that is a parked car. And we're approaching around about. So yeah, good mirrors here. No one next to us. Signal if you feel it's necessary. Always good to signal for the driving test. And change lanes. We'll be turning left at the roundabout. And look at that, instantly moving back to the left. I don't know. I don't think Mo's been doing too bad, to be honest. Oh, look at the lady crossing the road. Isn't that cute? See, Mo even stopped for her. How nice. Okay, now, is there any traffic? Oh, we got going again. Wow, okay. I, I think that's pretty decent. So... I don't see any issues there at all. I don't see any normal driving. Okay, we're going to keep our eyes peeled. Um, Mo did receive uh, 12. I think it was 12 minor driver faults on this. And there was a habitual driver fault for undue hesitation, which means that the same minor driver fault reoccurred multiple times. And that was undue hesitation. So once, twice, three times minor that means you miss an opportunity at a roundabout as an example um to go and that's an undue hesitation driver fault if we consecutively keep m getting my the same minor driver fault undue hesitation um that's habitual what the examiners call habitual driver fault then that gets marked down as a major driver fault or serious or dangerous driver fault as the examiners will call them 
and this is a game changer. One of those and we fail. We can receive up to 15 minor driver faults and pass, but one major, or serious or dangerous, um, major driver fault, as most people will call it, uh, that's the game, game over. Uh, you can't reload your last save point or anything like that, so just have to book another driving test. Go again. So do be careful of any major driver faults. You may be asking, what exactly is a major driver fault? That means if we kind of drive out in front of people at junctions, causing them to slow, stop, or swerve. Um, obviously, you run in lights or going into no entries, so road signs or traffic signs. Um, obviously, that could be a big serious as well. So the slow, stop, swerve um, is a good method to tell if you've committed a serious driver fault. It's keeping to the left here as well, which is probably not a good idea because there's going to be parked cars on the other side of the traffic light. We're going ahead, if you've seen any of my material, you'll know all about the parked cars here at the uh, pizza place ahead. Van's staying in the lane. I'm going to eat my words. Van's bringing, look, he's stopping exactly where I said the parked cars would be. Inside mirror, outside mirror, signal. Nice lane change. Good progress. I think there's pretty decent lane change there. There's another parked car as well. Inside mirror, left mirror, lane change. Sweet mo. You know what? I'm going to let him know about this. He's going to watch it as well. Mo, you're actually listening to me right now, aren't you? Okay, you know where you're going, Mo. <laughs> Straight at the first roundabout, left at the second. Let's see you rock and roll this one. Cool. Very nice. Well done, Mo. All right, now second one. No one there on the right, really. The red car's too far away. And he's going! <laughs> Sorry, Mo. <laughs> Remember, Mo's listening to me right now. This is nice. This is what I call the pinch. Obviously, you had the van driver open the door there, let alone the parked cars and the oncoming traffic. So well done for stopping. Uh, it looks like they got the hazard lights on that van or they flashed the lights. So nice to continue there, especially with the traffic following quite closely. Excellent. Okay, we've only got a couple of turns left, guys. And we're going to finish off with the maneuver in the test center, which would be the reverse bay park. I'm scratching my head here, thinking, where did that normal driving come from? That was very strange. If you saw it, please put it in the comments down below. Um, remember, we went over normal driving. Just to clarify, that's when we can use the left lane and we don't use the left lane. So in case you're still wondering what normal, normal driving is, um, it's not using the left lane when we can use the left lane. We'll be turning right here. Mo knows all about the position here. I can see it's nice and tight, good slow speed, holding that center line, reaching the center line of the new road, turning. Uh, okay, a little slow there, but it's fine. It's no big deal. Okay, yeah. Good turn, 100% onto his side of the road and not obstructing any of the oncoming traffic, as you can see. Nice position here, good gap from the park up. Allows us plenty of room, hiccups, uh, to move on after we've stopped, obviously. So it gives us plenty of room to move away. And then that way we don't get too close to any parked cars. It's very helpful. And a little bit further down, we're going to be turning right. And that's going to take us back to Tolkan Drive. Tolkan Drive is the address of the test center. So we're turning onto the test center road. I've stopped Mo here and corrected his position before look at that very central very central we can see that line down the middle road turning at the right time again mo you know i love it when you focus you know that just don't rub my chin again <laughs> i don't like it <laughs> and if anyone's been driving uh with us on his lives um i apologize <laughs> we're coming towards the end here um mo you've done good you've done very good very unfortunate. I just don't see the hesitation that much. Am I, have I missed something? Wow. Guys, if you have if you think Mo's been hesitant on this, put down hesitancy in the comments. If you don't think he's been hesitant, put pass down in the comments. Nice right turn here. Pretty decent. And we've got the next right turn. Earlier, this is where we started. So remember, slow on the start, slow on the end. So we're just coming in nice and slow. As you can see, it's really kind of hard to see here. So just take your time. Very narrow again. 
and look at the reference points on the dashboards. Have a look at those yellow lines there. See where they are. See how straight they are. See how they're staying in the same place. That means we're perfectly positioned all the way down that road. No dangers of getting too close to parked cars. Uh, here we have a vehicle doing its reverse bay park as well. So most just kind of holding back, not crowding that driver, which is quite kind. You know, we don't want to get too close to a learner driver trying to do a maneuver. I think we all know how that can make us feel a bit more pressured, um, increase the nerves, which we don't want, right, for our driving test. And for me, that is the main leading reason why people aren't successful. It's not that they're not able, they're not ready for the driving test. It's just to try and cope with the nerves and the test pressure. So there are a few remedies while we're waiting for this car to finish. We've got Rescue Remedy. You can buy these from supermarkets, chemists, pharmacies. Uh, Calms, um, that's another one. That's Both of these are suggested online for the driving test. Do your own research. I'm not a medical doctor. These are two. Bananas, yes, I know everyone's laughing, but apparently bananas are supposed to reduce anxiety. On a side note, what the hell's going on with that parking? Um, okay, on a, a serious note, uh, paracetamol. And finally, my favorite, breathing. <laughs> okay, just remember to breathe. And when you do breathe, breathe deep. Puff the belly out. Don't suck the belly in when you breathe in. Ah, puff the belly out, get as much air into the oxygen, uh, sorry, into the lungs as possible. Right, the examiner's going to ask him to edge up all the way to this wooden fence in front. And we're going to finish now with the maneuver. And if you do see the door, which is currently off screen on the left, you're going to see me standing there watching Mo do his parking in a second. So keep your eyes out for me in the background there. Um... Mo does a pretty decent job. Now, again, just coming back to the lives, if you have been joining us, then you'll see the actual 360 camera inside the vehicle and how useful that can be for the maneuvers. So it's on some of the other videos online, uh, some of the mock tests. And if you have a quick look at the other channels on all socials, you'll probably see some of the shorts and you'll just see a quick look. Most of the time, the camera's there in the center. So I'm sure you'll see that. So Mo's kind of doing his all-round observations. Do not rely on the camera. It's just there as a reference. So we're going to look over both shoulders before we start to reverse. We do this for all maneuvers. So observations are crucial. They're usually the leading reason for people not being successful. So before we start to reverse again, make sure we look over both shoulders and break your neck. Then in the middle of the maneuver, again, look over both shoulders and break your neck. And then finally, at the end of the maneuver, you guessed it, put the car into park and place the handbrake on. <laughs> no, look over both shoulders again. Why not? Okay, it's just a nice little finishing off observations, just in case we've missed anything. And it builds good habits. Okay, so as you can see, you can do corrections here. So Mo's not 100% certain if he's going to make his way into the bay. So he's actually just gone back to the beginning and started again. We can do this with all maneuvers. So if you don't feel happy with your sort of maneuver, you have up to three minutes, if the examiners are kind, to do your maneuver. So if that means you want to go back to the beginning and just try again, absolutely fine but we must break our neck before we move forward. So you know what that means. Look over both shoulders, out the back windows, and then move forwards. And then we'll have to start all the way from the beginning again. So that means observations again, and then observations in the middle, and observations as we finish. So Mo's just kind of adjusting his vehicle here with the bay markings on the side of the vehicle, just making sure that he's squeezing into those markings and that all four tires finish within the bay markings. So that's all four tires must finish within the bay markings. If any of the tires are on or over the bay markings, this can be a serious driver fault and we can fail. So just make sure <clears throat> that you're inside the markings. So Mo knows that his front right tire is just near the line he's not going to run the risk. So 
I don't know if you can see me. I'm watching him over there. Yeah, you can just about see me. Yeah, see me by the door. There I am, drinking my coffee. Saying, well done, Mo. You're doing good. You've passed. He's actually in the bay, by the way. He doesn't need to move forwards. But he moves forwards just a little bit to try and bring the tyre just a little bit away from that line on the right. I'm pretty certain that the examiner's asked him if he's finished now. And he does his checks and he's done. And that is the end of the test. But unfortunately, we didn't get a pass on this occasion. Remember, if you like content like this and you want to see more, you must put it in the comments down below. I've been Scott. This is Mock Test Plus. Feel free to reach out to us for any intensive courses and I'll see you on the next one.